all the information is already filled out and I apologize um been doing a lot of talking yeah, today and I guess my throat is not holding up okay so now we want to browse to the location that we want to save it at uh, okay and here and I have that in a temp folder for this tutorial uh, temp and I think tutorials and here's some who will just re we'll name this I'm not even sure what this thing is we'll call it tutorial tutorial all right and hit save okay so now that this is saved we can actually go in and open it up in the erupt software all right and go into your queue make sure your queue is uh, set up correctly uh, for this one for me I have it uh, my queue setup is DFX standard new um, again whatever yours is named um, you your, use yours but for me I've already set this up as my preset <clears throat> but for me I've already set uh, DFX standard new as my preset for uh, what we're working on what I'm working on right now again I'm working on with 13 19 by uh, 13 by 19 sheets and I want to go into color adjustments and I want to make sure that everything is set up correctly um, this is these are my settings that I pretty much use uh, and Got holes. I want to make sure that enable ink removal is selected <clears throat> and vary by hole size, uh, vary uh, hole size in areas of partial transparency is selected. Um, I pretty much leave this stuff down here set to default unless I'm doing some work inside of here, inside of the, uh, the rip. So we want to select OK and now we want to import the image hit the plus sign and tutorial once the image loads we're going to resize it to the window or to the page taking a little longer than usual uh, there it is so you want to make sure it's selected and then you want to fit the page okay so now that we have this in here the next step that we want to do or that I normally do is I like to be able to control my the size of the print as best as possible and the only way I know to do this uh, and, and others you know you guys may know have a tip or a trick you can give me but the only way I know to do this is to crop it as close to the image as possible and that will give me the most accurate uh, dimensions that uh, to use okay so we'll go down and hit crop and I'll select this image as close as I you know close to the image as I can and that's pretty close but now I can kind of tweak it down just a little bit more. All right. And it looks like that's pretty close and hit create. Now, when I put in, so let's say if I want this to be 11 and a half width, I know that it's pretty close to 11 and a half width versus all that negative space on the sides so let's go 11.5 and now we have that so that's a pretty decent size image um yeah it's a pretty decent size image so from here it's the work is done all we really have to do is hit print but we're going to look at it 
So we'll hit rip only. Once the rip uh, ripping is done, we're going to view the document, view raw data, and here we here we have. It. Now, if you notice, this is the area where I selected and I created a new document and I put transparency in it. And because I put that transparency in it, I now have little holes in this area. Uh, they're not going to be very noticeable holes, but it will add some breathability to an area that wasn't um, didn't have a lot of negative space to it. Uh, and and again, I really didn't have to do it on this one, but this was more of an example of let's say I did have some work that had a huge area with negative with with no very little negative spaces as to what I would do okay now to get a more accurate look or a better look at just where your ink is going to be laid at uh, it's always good to select and I think uh, what is this called view colors all colors is black and what that means again is wherever there's actual ink being laid down it's going to make it black now because this is a black image uh, it's going to be black on black and you really won't see anything but you can always go in and clean uh, change the substrate which is the background color to any other color and that'll show you exactly what you're looking at and here we are I, I, I would recommend that you always look at your uh, view your substrate or view your uh, raw data before you print um, a lot of mistakes can be made uh, one of the big mistakes that I used to make um, I would for not forget to remove the background but I would forget to turn the background off in Photoshop and I would get this big solid you know solid piece in here with all kind of uh, the whole page is ink and that was just a wasted sheet then so if you look at it this is what I have and look at all that negative space again only the black areas where ink is going to be at all the green that's that space okay so now we can turn that off and we can hit print hit print and that's it Okay, now it's time to marry uh, the AV sheets. I have my temperature set, my platen's warm or hot. Here's a look at the image before uh, being married. Okay, it's always a good idea to put the little, I guess, dog ears on the corners. Uh, for this uh, example, I did not, and you probably will see I had a, I had a, a little bit of time, a, 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 a little difficulty separating the corners, the edges at the beginning of the peel, which could have been disastrous. Okay, when I marry, I like to use very light pressure, typically somewhere around a two. time to peel and this is where you'll see uh, I had a difficult time separating the AB sheets uh, the little corner to get it started um, okay now that is being separated 
comes off nice and smooth. Um, and that's because of, in my opinion, that's because of all the negative space that's in the garment. If it was a solid uh, image, this would probably be, uh, would have grabbed, um, the paper would have stuck to it. Uh, and just not so sure I would have been able to peel it. Uh, that was an area that I had a lot of problems with in the beginning, not just not getting a good understanding of how the marrying process worked and how it worked as a, you know, as opposed to your negative space. Okay, now I'm pressing the garment onto the shirt. Let's right, look at it while it cools and what I typically do is I do it on just about all my garments I take it down I, I take it I take it and put it in the freezer for about uh, two minutes and that seems to help with the uh, when I'm peeling the garment uh, or the transfer off of the shirt the carrier sheet off of the shirt and I mean no ink at all on it And this is the garment before the final press. Uh, uh, you, as you can see, it's uh, pretty, very vibrant. Colors really came out nicely. Okay, this is a T-cell sheet that I'm uh, using as my finishing sheet. Highly recommend it. Okay, and the final press is about done. Okay, I uh, I think per the instructions, you should wait about five seconds after you remove the heat press from the platen, and here's the peel. Again, the final. The shirt is complete. Uh, not a lot of work. Feel is unbelievable. Uh, let me pull this up. I had a piece of hair on there. I was trying to get off. Not under the uh, garment, but not under the uh, transfer. Just uh, laying on the shirt. And that's the garment. Uh, colors are unbelievable.